This is Donald Trump. Very upset that it's all about the ventilators. Nobody looks at the good things that I've done. <laughs> like, apparently, now, uh, the story is, is that his own coronavirus task force basically does their best to ignore him. And they just get up there and play the sort of like backdrop for sh his uh, daily show that he does. But um, here, play this. And yet people don't like to say it. But remember, it was all about ventilators a month ago. Ventilators, ventilators. Then we fixed it. You don't hear about ventilators. Where is the ventilator? Jeff, you haven't asked about ventilators recently. What's going on? What about ventilators? We're helping other countries now because they can't have. They're very hard to come by, and they take a long time to make, like years. It's incredible the job they've done, that our people have done, and also private companies have done. Uh, you know, you talk about the act. Uh, we, uh, we don't like to use it unless we have. To, but a lot of times, just the fact that you have it gets you everything you need. So, you know, we don't want to embarrass any of the companies, but we have used it on a number of occasions and it worked, but it works just as well before you have to use it because they don't want to be embarrassed. And I don't want to embarrass them because they've done a great job. Um, the thing that Donald Trump doesn't seem to get about this, and this is why his own task force probably ignores him, is the desperate need for ventilators was because we were afraid that we had not shut things down quick enough and that the capacity of our medical apparatus would be um, outpaced. So here's Trump. He doesn't understand anything that's going on in terms of like, why are people talking, not talking about ventilators anymore? Not understanding that the ventilators we needed uh, were because we were concerned that our medical uh, capacities would be uh, in some way superseded. Here is the second, this is the second clip, right? Of yes. him just crying that the, the oh. press is not in any way like recognizing that we don't need ventilators anymore and they're moving on to something else. Testing is a big word. Remember, it was all ventilators. And the reason it was all ventilators, they said, there's no way he'll ever be able to catch this one. And not only did we catch it, we are now the king of ventilators all over the world. We can send them anywhere. We have thousands being made a week and they're very high quality. And that wasn't playing well. So then they said, testing, testing. Oh, we'll get them on testing. Well, testing is much easier than ventilators. Ventilators are big machines that are very complex that are very expensive. Uh, you need real, real, uh, you need a group of people that really know what they're doing. We took auto lines. We took a lot of different people. And now we've uh, done that. But it used to be ventilators, ventilators, ventilators. Now it's testing, testing, testing. That's right, because the testing is now about six weeks overdue. Larry Hogan has to go to uh, get his wife uh, with a connection in South Korea to get the testing. We could have gotten the testing from the Germans two months ago. But he wanted to run through his buddies. All the tests that are coming out now, apparently the FDA waved them all through, and now they're giving a bunch of false negatives. So they're completely ineffective. This is round two he's screwed up the test. And I mentioned this before, and Nomi, welcome back here. We obviously, uh, we lost our internet for a moment. But I'll tell you what you haven't heard much about. Now he's only hearing testing, testing, testing. AP reported two hours ago, a malaria drug widely touted by President Donald Trump for treating a new coronavirus showed no benefit in a large analysis of its use in U.S. veterans hospitals. There were more deaths among those given hydroxychloroquine versus standard care. This according to researchers. So wait, they, they, they were given the hydroxychloroquine instead of standard care or was in conjunction with? Is there any well, sense? I have presumed they gave them all the other care. It's just they also treated them. It's with totally endangering them then at that point. I hope that they asked for their permission to oh, treat them with this drug. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Man. Uh, Do you remember, I'm sorry. Do you remember during, during uh, the Iraq war, 
things were moving so quickly and you couldn't piece together the Eric Prince's of the world and how all the, and then it really took us, you know, several years to digest all of it and, and, and fantastic, you know, investigative reporters like Matt Taibbi. And I mean, it was a little bit later with the economy, but this is, it's going to take us a while to really process the level of, of grift attached to the incompetence and the, the, it's not even neglect. I mean, it's almost intentional. I mean, with the, with this pill in particular, if, if it is actually making it worse, then there are real damages here. I, I don't I don't know what legal action can be taken, but it, how long do you think it's going to take for us to kind of uh, get a sense of? I think it's going to take doing? Um, a lot longer to get a sense of all to like sort of um, put all of this stuff in context and to dig it out. Well, I mean, I think it's going to take a long, long time. And that is presuming that Donald Trump is not president. Right. This time next year. Right. Um, if Donald Trump is president this time next year, I don't think we ever find out about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, look at where we've come in four years. And Cause you can't foil, you can't, you can't do certain things to, I think that just the, the, all the, there's so many aspects of our, um, of our, uh, of our government. I think that are, that is, that is just uh, going to be broken, right. that it's going to be extremely difficult, uh, to, uh, to deal with. I mean, I think that's just, yeah. and I think we're going to get, you know, how many thousands of reporters have we lost in this thousands, thousands. And I don't think these are jobs that are going to come back yeah. unless there's some type of restructuring of things. Right. I just don't, I just don't think there are. I just don't think that there's, I think that a lot of people who are in that business are just going to say like, are you no way? Mm -hmm. And without things like student debt forgiveness, without uh, things like uh, a, a free college option, without things like, um, a greater social insurance support, like, you know, healthcare that everyone has that is, uh, paid for out of our taxes without things like, um, you know, uh, child worker protection, care whatnot. Like, <laughs> basic just, worker protection unions without, under attack. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm talking about without a certain amount of our needs, not being subject to the market yeah, and not being commodities. I don't see how you rebuild a profession like journalism when it is so precarious and there's no reason for anybody to imagine that it's not going to be less precarious. I mean, you know, you still have people go into it, but I just, you know, I can't imagine you'll have that many. And, and, and they're not going to be true. We had this issue. Wayne Barrett who was one of my mentors. Um, we started this fund in 2012 and it was to help, to help fund independent investigative reporting projects in New York state, because this was right after newsrooms just slashed all investigative reporting. And when we were looking for younger talent, it was, it was tougher just as, you know, Democrats are, are having difficulty finding the right talent progressives are finding because they have, there was no pipeline. So when you yeah. don't have newsrooms training, you can't just learn how to do investigative reporting by you do it on the job. It's, it's a real tough skill. You develop sources, et cetera. But, you know, looking at the bailout and you see, I call the bell, you see who's been bailed out. It's, it's monopoly companies. You, yep. they're, and, and, and they're, they're not taking the money or they're using it to protect their own interests and their CEO's interests. There's, there's no, um, there's no process of accountability and it's not small business or mid-level businesses that are being bailed out. So I think coming out of this, we're just going to see a more concentrated monopolized without a doubt than before. Yeah. Without a doubt. I think that's the biggest problem with the stimulus is that, you know, right. I keep using this analogy, but I'll use it again. W w you know, uh, one part of the economy is under a yellow flag and these corporations uh, that have a pipeline to the fed money, they're running under a green flag. Yeah. And so they're just the inequality and the amassing of assets is just going to be enormous. Yep. They're just getting all this free money that they're going to go around, they're going to buy all these distressed assets that are going to exist right. after this. Yep. And then the distressed assets will have value. They're not paying much interest on this money at all. It's free, basically mm -hmm. loaned to them free. Mm -hmm. And eventually they'll pay it back, but, but they'll have the opportunity to buy all these 
uh, assets that ultimately will get uh, more. It's a very easy way to make money, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself a businessman, but I'm quite uh, confident that somebody gives me uh, a million or 10 million or a hundred million dollars uh, interest free. I will yeah. be able to pay it back and I'll be able to put money in my pocket. Yep. Call from a 